Now it says um, in verse 20, Psalms 147 and 20, it says, He have not dealt so with any nation. That's talking about any other nation. He ain't dealing with them. He ain't dealt with them. They're counted as spittle. Okay. It says, As for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye Yahweh. Okay. They don't know his judgments. They don't know how the most high rolls, man. Okay. So, you know, like... When a newborn baby dies in a car accident, you lot say, oh, how can there be a God? How would he let something like that happen? It's because you don't know his judgments, man. That newborn baby was a grown man at one point. Man or woman, you know? It was a grown human at one point, man. And it's back again. But you lot, because you don't understand the true doctrine, you, you steady leaning upon Christianity, which doesn't teach you reincarnation. Okay, because reincarnation is not just based on Hinduism, which is a whole other topic. But if you go in my past videos on uh, my channel, Otish Yasharala, and if you go on to my old videos, some of my past videos, you'll find one that I did on reincarnation. Now, I didn't do the best job in the world breaking that down, but most high willing will get into that again and refresh your memory and maybe do a better I'll maybe do a better video this time. But I broke down a lot of scriptures that back up the fact that reincarnation is in fact biblical. It's real, it's biblical, it's not just based on Hinduism. Okay. Yeah, because I, I think in, in Hinduism they believe when you die you come back as like a goat or a cow or something. Yeah, man. Some sort of animal or something like that. Whereas yeah. The, the scriptures talk about when you you die, you go to the spirit world, you receive your judgment, and then three or four generations, you're back in, in the earth to fulfill your your judgment. Mm. So, like my brother was saying, if, if a baby, you know, is in a car accident and it dies, that was a judgment from, from the Heavenly Father. That baby had it coming, man. Okay. And it's as, har as harsh as that sounds, I mean, that that's the truth. The book of Job says, uh, no man ever perished being innocent. So that's talking about a baby too. It ain't talking about a full grown man. It's talking about a person, a woman, man, child, don't matter. No man has ever perished being innocent, man. So obviously if a child dies in a car accident, that child perished. But that child wasn't innocent, man. Okay, this is what you lot need to understand. So as for, I'm going to read it again in verse 20. This is Psalms 147 and 20. It says, he have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye Yahweh. Okay. That's talking about, you know, when a newborn baby dies in a car accident. That's an example of one of his judgments. Okay. That baby got judged. Okay. And you lot don't understand that. You ain't known his judgments. So this is the book of uh, Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. And it reads, For thou art an holy people unto Yahweh thy power. Yahweh thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's right. So in the book of Romans, chapter 9 and what was it? 3? Yeah, 9, verse 3. No, no. no chapter I think nine. 5. 9 and 5, it says, Who is above all? Okay, the scripture said in Romans 9 and 5, I believe, between 3 and 5, I believe it's 5, but it says, who is above all, you know, we are above all, Israel is above all, okay, and it also backs that up right here in Deuteronomy 7 and 6, because it says, we're a holy people unto the Lord our God, thy is possessive, the Lord thy God, it says, the Lord thy God, have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, a chosen people, okay? Separate, man. It says, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Okay, so that if that ain't racist, I don't know what is, man. Okay? So all of you that think that being racist is a bad thing, well, it is if you're hating another nation for no reason, which is one of the definitions of a racist. But there's another definition of what the word racism means, which means for someone to think that their race is superior to others. Well, we have our, our reason for thinking that our race 
is superior to others is excused because it's biblical. You other nations, you have no reason to be, no righteous reason to be racist, okay? If you're racist, you're just a hateful, evil bastard, okay? I'm going to put it like that, okay? Because our racism is based on biblical fact, the fact that we are that chosen nation and that we are counted in the Bible as above all nations on this earth. And you can check our track record and see that this is true, man. Who dominates the music industry, the sports industry, you know? Uh, everything that we put our hands to, man, we just dominate in this earth, man. We're physically stronger, emotionally stronger. We went through a whole Atlantic slave trade among many other slave trades in this world, man. I think every nation in this earth has had us in captivity. And we still here staying positive, looking good, man, you know, doing great, man, you know. What other nation can do that? You lot would have offed yourself a long time ago, man. There ain't no way in hell you lot can survive a captivity like that we went through, you know. But you heathen are going to have to have a taste of that soon, according to the scriptures. So it says that we're a nation above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now there's a precept to that in Deuteronomy 14 and verse 2. Yeah, so this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 2. And it reads, For thou art an holy people unto Yahweh thy power. And Yahweh hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all nations that are upon the earth. That's right. So there it describes it us as being above all nations, okay? We're not only above all people, but we're above all nations. And this is a precept. This is why you go precept upon precept to get the full understanding of certain scriptures, man. So any of you that might be taking notes, you might want to write that down in your Bible, right next to this scripture here, right? Deuteronomy 7 and 6. And right next to Deuteronomy 7 and 6, very small, you might want to write Deuteronomy 14 and 2 because they go hand in hand. Those are precepts. I got a precept uh, on that as well. Okay. Um, so this is it's still in the same book, um, Deuteronomy, but this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8. And it reads, When the Most High divided the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So the Most High divided the nations. He didn't want us all together to dwell in, in unity in one big happy family he divided us like he divided the nations and he separated us and he numbered the nations according to the children of israel which was the smallest nation in number mm. so that just goes to show you that the most high is a separatist he, yeah. he, he's only for his people and and these people these elites that are coming in with their new world order agenda they're trying to bring out about a one world religion a one world government which the Most High, that's the spirit of the Antichrist, man. The Most High is against that, okay? You know, that's coming in the spirit of um, Nimrod, man, okay? We, we ain't supposed to be coming together as one. We're all different, okay? And, and there's order. The Most High likes things to be done decently and in order. And the order is that there's a chosen nation that were given the laws, as stated in the book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 5, 3 through 5, that we were given the laws and we're meant to rule over these other nations and teach them how to keep the laws. But because we're acting like a bunch of niggas, a bunch of thoughts, a bunch of baby mamas and gangbangers, we're, we're acting like a bunch of damn degenerates right now. We're at the bottom because we don't know who we are. We calling our steady calling ourselves black people, steady calling ourselves Mexican, steady calling ourselves Indians. When we're none of these things, we are in fact the children of Israel. And until you come into that understanding, you're never going to have any power. All right. So we're going to turn to the book of John, chapter four and verse twenty-two. All right. So this is the book of uh, John, chapter four, verse twenty-two. And it reads, ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. That's right. And who are the true Jews in this world today? 
you Israelites, man, especially the southern kingdom, you are the real Jews because the word Jew means Judah. It's, a sh it's short for Judah. So you, the tribe of Judah is the top tribe of the nation of Israel. And they're the, the real Jews, okay? Benjamin, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the Negro, uh, are the real Jews, okay? Now that I've got that clear, um, it says, Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. That means salvation is only for Israel, okay? It's not talking about just but Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. It's talking about for Israel. Salvation is of the Israelites. All right, next, we want to turn to the book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 31. Okay, so this is the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 31. And it reads, Him hath the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a saviour, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. That's right. So uh, repentance is only given to Israel. And forgiveness of sins is only given to Israel. So this is talking about Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai is the right hand of the Most High. So what it's saying is him, meaning Yahweh Shai, have the Most High exalted with his right hand because that's who Yahweh Shai is, is the right hand of the Most High. It says to be a prince and a savior. Okay, this is who he is, the King of Kings. Okay. And it says, for to give repentance unto Israel. It specifically says Israel. It doesn't say other nations. Okay, and this is something that you lot need to come to grips with, man. Okay, you, you just need to understand that you other nations have a role. It doesn't mean that you're damned to a place called hell for eternity and you're going to burn in a fiery pit of fire and brimstone forever. And It doesn't mean that, okay? It just means that you have to serve us. You have to... Stay in your place, which is under us. You're not above us. You're not going to rule this world and skip around happily and destroy it like you did in this world, in this kingdom. Okay, in the kingdom of heaven, you're going to be in your rightful place. And you just need to come to grips with that and accept that. That's all that means. Recognize who we are, which we're not black people. We're not Mexican. We're not Indians. Okay, we are the children of Israel. We Yasha Allah and we're above you. So until you come to grips with that and accept that and allow us to rule over you, which we will do in righteousness, because when we rule this earth, everybody's going to be good, man. OK, the scriptures say when the wicked rule, the people mourn. But when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. And that's roughly paraphrasing. But the scriptures say that. And we're the righteous, man. So when we rule, which is what's coming next, according to the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6 and 9, when we're ruling, the whole world is going to break forth into singing, man. It's gonna, They're going to rejoice. The whole world's going to be happy. You're going to have to serve out your judgment for the thousand years. You're going to have to go into captivity or you heathen nations. But after that, you get to live. You get to go back to your lands and stuff. But you're still going to be under us, but you're going to be willingly serving us at that point. You're going to be happy to serve us. When you see what we do to this world, you're going to be happy that we are ruling over you. Okay. Right now, through your pride and through your hate for us, you can't see this happen and you don't want this to happen. But I guarantee you're going to be glad it's happened when it happens. Okay. Maybe not for the first thousand years because you're going to have to serve out your judgment. But after that... When you're when you whipped in the shape, and you become a and you and you and you obey, keep the laws, then hey, all is sweet, man. Everyone gonna be happy. Everyone gonna eat, man. Okay. So repentance is for Israel and forgiveness of sins. That is plain and clear. Doesn't get no clearer than that. I don't even really need to break it down anymore. It says what it says, and that's it, man. Now we're going to go to, uh, as a precept, we're going to turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. So this is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. And it reads, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Boom. There you have it. Plain as day. How can you get around that, man? 
but you will find a lot of people that will try their hardest to twist that and make it say what they want it to say which hey the spirit ain't dealing with you if you're dealing with trickery and deception man okay you're not supposed to do the work of the lord deceitfully okay and 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 his ways are plain to the righteous man they're plain to the just but they're stumbling blocks unto the wicked so when we bring out scriptures like this which is red letter yahweh shai speaking you know plain as day i'm gonna read it again <clears throat> just so it sticks in your head matthew 15 24 it says but he answered and said i am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of israel plain as day man that don't need no breaking down that says what it says okay and this is this it just you know we have to bring these out constantly because it, it bugs us the fact that people just don't get it how can you get around that I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay. There, there's just absolutely no way around it. No way at all. So you heathen, you're below us. A heathen is anybody that's not an Israelite. You heathen are below us. You're counted as spit. And you will serve us in the kingdom. Okay. You're going to build up our walls and serve us. You know, during the reign of Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> so, next I want to turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 2. And we're going to read 8 through 9. Okay, so this is the book of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 8. And it says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like the potter's vessel. Boom. Okay, we're going to rule over these nations with a rod of iron, us as the children of Israel. Okay, that means that we're going to have a vigorous rule over these other nations, man. You're going to be put in your place. You need to be, because there ain't no way in hell we're going to allow this world to go back to this, what you see today. Social distancing, two meters, put, put your mask on. Put three masks on. <laughs> yeah, put three masks on. Be extra safe. Oh my God, are you even talking about three masks is extra efficient <laughs> for extra efficiency? Man, yeah, this is kind of suffocate. Kind of a devil we're dealing with, man. Job 9.24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. And when the wicked rule, the people mourn, man. That's what you got going on here. But you lot are too dumb to recognize it because you're, sh you're shallow minded. You don't think deep enough, man. You don't see what this world has potential to be and what, is, what it is under a, certain, a particular nation's rule right now. The most high made nations diverse in their ways. And you have the nation of Esau Edom ruling over us, man. The basis of all nations, as stated in the book of uh, Daniel, chapter 4 and verse 17, man. He is a base man, meaning the bottom. He's the lowest of all nations. So in verse 8, Psalms 2 and 8, it says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, meaning a possession. We, you know, ask of the Lord, and he will allow us to possess you as slaves, okay? Slavery is condoned in the Bible. The Most High is a man of war, as concerned in the book of Exodus 15 and 3. Okay, the Most High is a man of war, and... What do you do when you get, when you conquer a nation, man? You take people captive. You, you, you take slaves. Slavery is condoned. The Most High allowed you to put us into slavery as our punishment. And we have to drink that cup. Now it's coming the time where you're going to have to drink of that cup, Esau, Edom. Okay? So you just have to take it on the chin like a man. Be a man about it. It says, in the uttermost parts of the earth are thy possessions. So we will possess the fatness of the earth next. Because that was your blessing to have the fatness of the earth right now, Esau, Edom. As stated in the book of uh, Genesis, chapter 27. Alright, so uh, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14. Uh, I'll start from the top, verse 1. It says, for Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. 
and set them in their own land, and strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Verse 2, it says, And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and shall rule over their oppressors. That's right, man. We're going to rule over our oppressors, the ones that are oppressing us right now. All these other nations, man. Okay, they've got their foot on our neck, treating us like crap. And it's coming a time where the role is going to be reversed. The Most High is about to do a switcheroo. Okay, so it says the Most High will have mercy on Jacob and Israel. Okay, same person. Yet choose Israel. It says set them in their own land, which is Israel, the land that was stolen from us. Because the scriptures say that the people that occupy that land now, they're known as the synagogue of Satan. Okay. The ones that are pretending to be us. The 1948s. The 1948s. That's right. It says, And the people shall take them, bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them. So what happens when you possess something, man? That means you own it. It means that's your property. Okay. So the scriptures say that ask of me and I will give you the heathen for thy inheritance, okay, to possess the heathen. So this is also a precept here, letting you know that the, we will possess them for, it says, in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, for a slave man, slave woman, okay, you'll be our servants. We will rule over you. And we will do it in righteousness. We're not going to be butt breaking you. And feeding you to alligators. And all these things that you did to us. Okay. And if you don't know what we're talking about. You have Google at the f at, at, at your fingertips. Okay. Use your smartphone for smart things. And Google alligator bait. And Google buck breaking. Buck breaking. Okay. So you can understand what I'm saying. Google that and find out exactly the type of disgusting things that they did to us during the slave trade. So next, I want to turn to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 5 and 9. Because I want to prove to you that the heathen are counted as our enemies, not our friends. So this is the book of uh, Nehemiah, chapter 5, verse 9. And it says... Also I said, it is not good that ye do, or ye not to walk in the fear of our power, because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies. Okay, so that right there is letting you know that the heathen are considered our enemies. Okay, so don't be feeling sorry for the fact that we're going to rule over our oppressors, rule over these heathens. They are not our friends. They're counted as our enemies, okay? They're the enemies of the children of Israel. Okay? They're not our friends, man. The Most High ain't about us loving everybody. Okay? The Most High is, knows that we have enemies. We have people that don't have our best interests at heart in this world, man. They're not our friends. You'll never um, come out victorious if you don't know that you have enemies in this world, man. They will always have an advantage of you by you thinking that everyone's your damn friend. So next we're going to turn to the book of um, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 6. So this is uh, the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 6. And it says, seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. It's a righteous thing to recompense tribulation unto them that trouble us. So don't think it's a bad thing. Two wrongs don't make a right. You know, they had us in slavery. Why should we have them in slavery? Why don't we just let bygones be bygones? Why don't we just live and let live and love everybody? Nah, man. Okay. It's a righteous thing to recompense tribulation unto them that trouble us. And we've been troubled by these heathen nations, man. 
on a mass level, okay? We've been systematically oppressed. I mean, life has been a nightmare for us under the rule of these heathens and these devils, man. Okay? And we're, and, and we're ready for payback. We're ready for payback, man. Okay? So, another scripture I actually want to bring out uh, is the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 9. Yeah, so this is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 9. And it says, uh, If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. That's right. You know, this is what the saints are patiently waiting for. Now, you people that have been rocked to sleep by Christianity... I don't know what your impression of a saint is. When you think of a saint, in your head you're thinking of somebody that looks a particular way or acts a particular way. But the saints are the Israelites. Okay? And we can prove this through Scripture because the Scriptures do say that we must prove all things. The saints are the Israelites. And this is what the Israelites, the ones that know they're Israel, the true Israelites... This is what they're patiently waiting for, man. It's for you heathens to go into captivity. And this is a righteous thing for us to recompense tribulation unto them that trouble us. Okay, and I know I know a lot of you ain't going to listen to us. You're going to think we're just chatting crap. Although we're coming out of the scriptures. You buck up against what we're saying. You're really bucking up against Yahweh Shai. Because we're bringing out the words of Yahweh Shai in its purest form which is going to sound offensive to a lot of people. But we don't care. It's not our job to spare your feelings. Our job is to cry aloud, spare not, and lift up our voice like a trumpet, as the scriptures state. Okay? And to show our people their transgressions. That's right. And to show you people your transgressions. Part of your transgression is by thinking these heathen nations are your friends. You know, you need to be corrected. And realize that these other nations are not your friends. You do have enemies. It doesn't mean that you have to treat them a certain way. You know, at your job, you stuck around nothing but Edomites. So you just blank them and stick your nose up to them and treat them like crap. No, we ain't saying that. you got to tread wisely in this world, man. We're commanded also to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And... In as much as it is possible, we're supposed to live peaceably among all men. Okay? So we ain't supposed to go around like a nigger just because we know we're better than these other nations and just because we know that there are enemies. Okay? You tread wisely, man. You know? Don't treat them any different. Just know who they are. Keep that knowledge among yourself, man. You know, teach your people, the wise of your people. But, you know, don't go around telling everybody, oh, you know, you're my enemy. I can't speak to you. You know what I mean? That ain't the way we're supposed to be treading out here, man. Use wisdom. Use your head, man. All right. So, if any man have an ear, let him hear. So you that understand, you that have the ears to hear, the wisdom to understand, it says, he that leadeth him to captivity shall go into captivity and all these nations have had us in captivity in some point in history he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword and Esau was blessed with the sword man according to the book of uh, Genesis chapter 27 he was blessed with the sword and he's gone, done nothing but go around and conquer with the sword and rape, rub, steal kill and destroy with the sword man okay this is the M.O. of the Edomite. I quickly want to turn to the book of Obadiah, chapter 1 and verse 15. Yeah, so this is the book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 15. And it says, For the day of Yahweh is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. That's right. You know, this, originally this, this video was meant to be about um, salvation only being for Israel. But it seems to have branched off through the spirit onto 
other topics also as far as these heathen going into captivity and the fact that they're not our friends okay which you know we're not really going off topic so much because it's still all a part of the gospel but this is the way the spirit has led us you know and it wasn't my intention to bring out some of these scriptures but it's important that we prove through precepts that what we're bringing out actually means what we are saying what we are letting you know it means okay because our interpretation is is not a private interpretation man our our interpretation of these scriptures is the true uh interpretation of these scriptures okay whether you want to understand it and see it for what it is or recognize it or believe it or not man it's we don't care. We're only doing this for the elect anyway. Because the elect are going to see it for what it is and they're going to understand. Okay. So I'll read it again. It says, uh, Book of Obadiah 1 and 15. For the day of the Lord, for the day of Yahweh, His name's Yahweh. It says, Is nearer upon all the heathen, all them that are not Israelites, man. Your day is coming. It says, As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. So what you've done to the world and what you've done to the children of Israel is going to return upon your own head, man. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Get ready for slavery, Esau, Edom, man. Thus yeah. saith Yahweh. That's right. And you can uh, read about the, uh, the enemies of Israel in the book of Psalms, chapter 83. So it tells you that the enemies made a tumult. And it starts right. listing them off one by one. Yep. So if you part of those nations, good luck for the future because it ain't looking too bright for you. <laughs> That's it. Call hello, you have a by shy. That's right. Gone. Uh, I think we'll end it there. You know, um, in fact, you know what? I'll bring out one more scripture because I do need to show you that the Israelites are the saints. Okay, I did say that the Israelites are the saints and I actually should bring out a scripture, at least one scripture that backs that up because the Israelites are the saints, okay? This is what the saints are patiently waiting for you heathen to go into captivity, especially you Esau, Edom, man, our number one enemy, okay? You're going into captivity, and this is what the saints are patiently waiting for. Let's turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 148 and verse 13. Okay, so this is the book of Psalms, chapter 148, verse 13. And it says, Let them praise the name of Yahweh, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalted the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise ye Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. So what that's saying, and I'll read verse 14 again and break it down. So this is one, uh, Psalms 148 and 14. He also exalteth the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, so the pe his people are the saints, says even of the children of Israel. Now even is not saying also, it's saying which is. This is old English, man. And it's saying which is the children of Israel. So if I read that again, and I'll say what's which is instead of even, it will make more sense to you. So it says, he exalteth, he also exalteth the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, which is the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise ye Yahweh. Okay, so the Israelites are the saints. Hmm. So I'll even read uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 12, as a precept, which is going to also back up the fact that the Israelites are the saints. So this is uh, the book of Revelation 14 and 12. It says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they which keep the commandments of the Most High 
and the faith of Yahweh Shai. And as we read in the book of Romans, Romans chapter uh, 13, no, chapter 9, and verse 3 through 5, the only ones that can keep the commandments or the commandments were given to, the law was given to, are the children of Israel. Okay, so, you know, if your mind doesn't really know how to focus and, and, um, break these down mathematically in your head, these scriptures, then you're never going to really understand it, man. Okay, because these precepts go together like a jigsaw puzzle to bring you a bigger picture, a clear picture of what this is actually saying. So the children of Israel are the saints. You know, and there are more scriptures, but hey, I've given you enough, man. And, you know, most I will and I'll do a lesson on it another time. But for the sake of time, we're going to close this lesson out, man. Okay. Now, we hope you lot were edified out there. And um, if you have any questions concerning anything that we've brought out in this lesson, feel free to come in our comment board and ask. Okay. We don't bite. We're not going to assume you're an Edomite if you look like an Edomite. Okay. We're not going to assume you're a Moabite, which is so-called Chinese people. We're not going to assume you're a heathen if you look like a heathen. Let's just put it that way. If you come and you have a question, we're going to treat you fairly, okay? And we're going to answer your question to the best of our ability, okay? We're not going to treat you like a heathen if you look like a heathen and say, get the hell out of here, you damn devil, okay? We're not going to do that. So don't be scared to come, or, uh, come and ask a question. But you better come respectfully because we ain't going to tolerate anybody coming in our comment board and scoffing, okay? We don't tolerate that, man. You'll get ignored, blocked, or rebuked, okay? So, you know, we hope you lot were edified out there. We hope you learned a lot through what we brought out today because we've been dropping gems, man. Okay, and it would be a wise thing for you to take notes. And this is all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So on that note, man, we want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rakah Kodash Shalom.